When the Sega Dreamcast launched in Japan in 1998, the excitement for home conversions from Sega's Model 3 arcade hardware was incredibly high. On paper, Sega's new home system was powerful enough to do these games justice, lending even more fuel to the fires of excitement. The Dreamcast even had Virtua Fighter 3 Team Battle available day one, a game that the Sega faithful had been wanting at home for years by then. The Dreamcast would go on to have many great arcade games in its library, but Model 3 arcade games would make up only a tiny portion of it. In this episode, we are going to look at some of the Model 3 ports it did receive, as well as take a quick look at many Model 3 games it would miss out on. I hope you guys enjoy the Sega Dreamcast and the Model 3. Since Virtua Fighter 3 launched both pieces of hardware, it makes sense for us to start there. The vanilla arcade Virtua Fighter 3 originally released in 1996, with the Team Battle upgrade here following a year later. The Dreamcast version landed in November of 1998 at its Japanese launch. The arcade version was internally developed by AM2, with Genki taking over the Dreamcast port. This game catches a lot of flack in the community for its visuals, but I happen to enjoy it. The arcade gameplay is fast and fun, and the Dreamcast port plays well overall. From a visual standpoint, many will not notice a ton of differences in the home port, but closer inspection definitely reveals it to have a number of weaker elements. The biggest flaws center mainly on polygon counts on the characters, shadow details, and some weaker texture work in the environments. I think many people tend to be harsh on this game because by the time it landed in the West, Soul Calibur had been seen casting Sega's two-year-old vanilla port in with some pretty stiff competition. The team battle mode also is almost completely useless in single player, thanks to having to play the same characters multiple times, sometimes even in the same fight. Despite that, I find Virtua Fighter 3 team battle for the Dreamcast to be a fun addition to the Virtua Fighter franchise. It lacks the technical pizzazz of the other 3D fighters on the system, but isn't a terrible game by any means. Fighting Vipers 2 is an often forgotten Model 3 arcade game that was ported to the Dreamcast. Originally done by AM2 and released in the arcades in 1998, a Dreamcast version was released in early 2001 and handled by CRI. Before I begin, I want you guys to know that the Dreamcast port is still a very nice playing game that runs at 60 frames per second. It has a number of gameplay elements that would go on to be used in some of AM2's best work, like Virtua Fighter 4. The Dreamcast port, for whatever reason, just completely trashes the beautiful backgrounds of the Model 3 arcade release. The characters come across great, but you lose a ton of detail in both textures as well as geometry itself in the home port. This takes the technically brilliant arcade visuals down a few notches, leaving you with a game that should have been better. This is especially true since it was such a late release and other games on the system are vastly superior visually. I'm grateful the Dreamcast got a port, and I certainly can still enjoy this release, but this is one that should have been a much more impressive game visually. Sega Rally 2 was released in the arcade in 1998 and done by Sega AM Annex. The Dreamcast port would be handled by Sega Software R&D Department 6 and released in early 1999. You've probably heard a lot about the Dreamcast version of this game, particularly when it comes to the visuals. You've likely heard that the frame rate is all over the place, and that the polygon draw-in is more noticeable. It's all true, and there is absolutely no question that the Dreamcast version is far from perfect. The lack of a steady 60 frames per second really hammers the gameplay. Taken on its own merits, the gameplay itself is actually still decent and holds your attention. The power slide heavy gameplay from the first returns here, and fans of the first game should pick it up pretty fast. This is a comparison video, however, and the Model 3 powered arcade is noticeably superior in almost every category. Sega developed this alongside the Dreamcast hardware using Microsoft's Windows CE. This likely led the game to not use the hardware to its fullest, leaving us a fun, but very flawed representation of a much better game. Cyber Troopers Virtual On Oratorio Tangrum was originally developed by Sega AM3 on the Model 3 platform and released in 1998. An update to that game was done in 1999, which was then ported by CRI to the Dreamcast. 
Lucky for us, the Dreamcast version of the game really holds its own, both visually and in the gameplay department. The mecha-inspired characters look exceptional in both versions, as do the 3D free-roaming fighting arenas. The big gameplay learning curve common to the series is still here, but if you can give it some time, this is definitely a game worth your time. It's unique, looks great, and can be a great multiplayer experience. Definitely an a Model 3 port. The Dreamcast would also see a version of Virtua Striker 2, Sega's popular soccer game that was originally developed by AM2 for the Model 3. The Dreamcast version here is an updated engine based on that content. I'm not a big soccer guy, but even I can play this easygoing game and understand what's going on. The arcade gameplay is perfect for everyone, and I love the way the game looks. The detailed field, players, and crowds really lend an air of authenticity to the experience. Best part is, side by side you'd be hard pressed to lay any hard critiques to either version of the game. In fact, this may have been a case where the Dreamcast one-ups the Model 3 visually in a few areas. I don't recommend soccer games often, but Virtua Striker 2 is a perfect example of a sports game done right. Finally, the Dreamcast got a port of the Model 3 game Sega Bass Fishing, known as Get Bass in Japan. The arcade version was released in late 1997 and developed internally by AM1, with the Dreamcast port landing in early 1999 and being handled by Sims. The version you are seeing here is the Dreamcast version, and while I wish I could have shown you a side-by-side, -side, I simply could not get the arcade version to run properly. I do have one of these in an arcade not too far from me, and the Dreamcast version holds up pretty damn well. The main difference is in the aliasing the two games suffer, with it being much more pronounced in the Dreamcast effort. Both games are still visually nice overall, and the gameplay is actually pretty good if you have any interest in the subject matter. The arcade actually had a fishing controller mounted to it, something that was replicated on the Dreamcast with a fishing peripheral of its own. It's a relaxing game that was done justice by the Dreamcast release. The Dreamcast certainly has its up and downs when it comes to Model 3 ports. A few were okay, a few were rough around the edges, and a few were quite good. The story of the Model 3 and the Dreamcast doesn't end with these games, however. Perhaps even more interesting than what the Dreamcast got from the Model 3 is what it didn't get. I've heard numerous explanations from many sources as to why the Dreamcast didn't receive more games from the Model 3. These include lack of internal resources, a lack of processing power, and even that Sega wanted to avoid straight arcade ports because of the stigma that came along with them being too short, simple, and lacking content. Whatever reason you choose to get behind, the Dreamcast did not receive most of the very best Model 3 games released in the arcade, so let's take a look at some of those now. While the Dreamcast did get an updated version of Daytona USA, complete with a visual overhaul and extra content, it never got Daytona 2. This is still mind-boggling to me even now, especially since Daytona 2 was all new content all the way around at the time, visually stunning, and one of Sega's most popular racing franchises. Even if the detail would have needed to have been dialed back, this game needed a Dreamcast port in the West desperately. It's perhaps the most glaring absence from the entire Dreamcast library of Model 3 ports. Sega also never brought Scud Race to the Dreamcast, a curious choice since demos of the game existed running on Dreamcast hardware to show third parties what it was capable of. I could have understood Sega skipping this one had Daytona 2 been released, if only to avoid having too many arcade racers at once, but since that never happened, it's another head-scratching choice. The Lost World Jurassic Park was a Model 3 rail shooter that was extremely popular in the arcade. The first game had been a System 32 superscaler, so the complete polygon overhaul here really looked stunning when it was released. It was basically Virtua Cop with dinosaurs, but was faster and far more difficult. The two-player mode was incredibly fun, and despite Sega having access to the home license to do it, chose to skip it entirely. I have one at my local arcade that is still in decent shape, and play it quite often with my daughter. The Ocean Hunter was another gun game that Sega would leave in the arcade unported. You'll travel the seven seas in this one, taking out aggressive aquatic life until you get to a legendary sea creature that will need to be defeated. It's a Model 3 game so it looks great, 
but the appeal here was the unique environment for an on-rail shooter. Combine that with the two-player mode and you have a game that you could really put some time into. A real shame it never got any kind of version on anything, particularly since Sega created the IP. It would have made a fantastic Wii game. One of the wildest Model 3 arcade games was Emergency Call Ambulance, a time-based driving game where you must get your patient to the hospital before their time runs out. Each stage was preceded with a big accident that you must respond to, picking up a patient in crisis. This one was basically similar to Crazy Taxi, with a more serious theme. It was a really short game comprised of only four cases that needed to be completed, so I can understand why Sega didn't do a straight port. But there was something unique here in its execution, and had Sega added some more scenarios to what was already there, this could have been something worth looking at on the Dreamcast. I don't think there was anything here visually the Dreamcast couldn't have done either, with Crazy Taxi looking better in many ways. Harley Davidson and LA Riders is another Model 3 game that would be skipped on the Dreamcast. This one had you choosing a bike and trying to get to random locations in a completely open world before the time runs out. It wasn't your traditional racing game by any means, and the open map really would have been something special at the time. It looked great too, and with a few home additions like more bikes, rivals, a mission mode, and maybe some multiplayer, I feel this could have been an absolutely fantastic Dreamcast game. Even if Sega had dropped the license and just called it LA Riders, the motorcycle theme and the open world could have appealed to many racing fans. With Sega completely abandoning the 2D Streets of Rage franchise in the 16-bit era, you'd think they'd want a polygon replacement for their new console. That game should have been Spike Out Digital Battle Online, a fully 3D beat-em-up that featured multiple cabinets for its multiplayer. The Dreamcast was absolutely screaming for this game to be done, especially for the multiplayer. The game looks and plays great, a huge step up from the other 3D beat-em-ups of the era like Fighting Force. The chief designer of the arcade version has stated that a Dreamcast home port was in development, but abandoned due to the Dreamcast lacking the power to do it justice. After seeing what Sega pulled off with Model 2 ports on the Sega Saturn, I find this very difficult to accept. Compromises could have been made in areas and we still could have gotten a solid Dreamcast game. A home version of Spike Out would not be seen until an OG Xbox version got a release years later. Sega also had Star Wars Trilogy Arcade on the Model 3, a cinematic mixed genre game that would be comprised of various scenes from the original trilogy of movies. With LucasArts helping develop the game, this is actually one of the most playable and visually appealing games to come from that universe. You get dropped into some of your favorite scenes from the movies, and you know exactly what to do. Anyone could pick it up and play it, and the difficulty was challenging enough to kill you a few times before you beat it. Had Sega added a few more scenarios into what was already here, they could have had a killer Dreamcast release. Unfortunately, that never happened, nor did a home release of any kind since. The real tragedy is, is that not only did the Dreamcast not get most of these games, nor would anything else after it. With licensing being a huge issue now, the likelihood that many of these games are lost to the annals of time is pretty certain. Another discussion is whether or not the Dreamcast was even capable of doing these games justice visually. I feel that in most cases, yes it was. The Dreamcast was no slouch when it came to power in 1998, and even with the Model 3 arcade hardware seeing regular upgrades with four distinct versions, I feel there was nothing there that a little compromise couldn't have easily dealt with. The more likely scenario for their absence is that Sega indeed did not want to flood the Dreamcast with arcade racing games and shooters, especially at a time when its competition was seeing huge market share gains on the backs of RPG and adventure games that were comprised of vast amounts of content. What the Dreamcast did receive was not all crap though. Virtual Fighter 3 Team Battle and Fighting Vipers 2 indeed were rough around the edges, but still great playing games, and I recommend Sega Bass Fishing, Virtual On, and Virtual Striker 2 highly. Sega Rally 2 is perhaps the biggest disappointment with its shoddy frame rate, robbing us of the sublime arcade experience at home. I'm Sega Lord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.